Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat, episode 407, featuring part two of the Bronze Age of computer role-playing games. Uh, in this uh, segment, we'll be looking at uh, the Temple of Apshai series, or the Dungeon Quest series. Uh, we'll also be looking at uh, Talon Guard, uh, one of my uh, favorite procedurally generated games of the Bronze Age. And we'll also be looking at uh, a game I, I have to be honest, I didn't like so much, but I still think it's an interesting uh, from a historical uh, point of view, and that is Eduware's Space. And as a bonus, at the uh, end of the episode, I actually have a sealed copy here of Telengard uh, that I'll be opening at the end of this video as kind of a, a little bonus. Uh, so you can see what the uh, the inside of that box would have looked like and, and the content. So that should be exciting. Anyway, we've got a lot to cover here. So without further ado, here is the Bronze Age Part 2. And here we go, folks, with the first game in our lineup for today. This is the Temple of Apshai Dungeon Quest, or Dungeon Quest. And it's by uh, John Freeman. If that name is familiar to you, it might not be. But he uh, went on and did... A lot of games with his uh, his wife and uh, let's see what all they what they've done there uh, yeah a lot of epic stuff crush crumble and chomp rescue at Rigel and then later on they went on to uh, form Freefall Associates and did the Archon games and among among others so pretty well known uh, designers behind this of course this is one of their earliest games but uh, really this is probably one of the better known role playing games from the bronze or Bronze Age. Uh, I talked about Calabeth last time and how great that game was, but really, I don't know how many people outside of the fairly limited Apple II community would have ever played that. Uh, this game, on the other hand, was pretty widely distributed. It was ported to a lot of different systems. We'll take a look at the uh, Commodore 64 version. Uh, but this is the, on the, originally it was designed for a computer called the Trash 80, or the TRS 80. Uh, Tandy, a computer you could buy at Radio Shack, <laughs> and go home and set this up. And I never had one, so I had to do all kinds of research just to figure out how to load this ROM into the the emulator. Uh, it took a little doing. And uh, by the way, I'm not sure how accurate this emulation is here. It might be off. Uh, I don't know, like the loading speeds and everything, how uh, spot on that is. But just for what it's worth, it, it seems to play pretty well. And what I liked about this game, especially compared to some of the other ones I played from this era, was it's fairly uh, intuitive, you know, especially for the time. Uh, you can see there uh, these menus. You don't really have to keep looking at the manual to figure out what, your <laughs> what button to push. <laughs> uh, you just type in the name of uh, what it is you're wanting to buy there. Uh, we don't have the stats for these weapons, but it's pretty obvious that the uh, more expensive it is, probably the better <laughs> it is. Uh, we do have to go through this tedious haggling process. I mean, it seemed like a lot of the games back then, they thought you just had so much fun haggling. <laughs> uh, of course, uh, historically speaking, this was the norm. I mean, you didn't go to the uh, Walmart and see a, a set of chain mail there with a sticker price on it, right? <laughs> Everything was behind a counter, and you had to go uh, talk to the clerk there and uh, see if you could uh, get a good deal on something, right? Uh, so I, <laughs> I don't miss those days. <laughs> uh, wilt thou buy a bow? Uh, so you can see they're also trying to inspire that role-playing vibe. Remember, they're trying to emulate basically that good old-fashioned Dungeons & Dragons role-playing session, right? So uh, this would be like the Dungeon Master uh, talking to you in, in dialect with a with an accent, right? And the, <laughs> wilt thou buy a, a, a longbow or whatever. Uh, they don't have graphics, they don't have music, they're, so they're, they're working with what they got, folks. So I think they do a pretty good job. Uh, this game is actually fairly complicated. Uh, I mean, there's quite a bit of stuff to keep up with. Uh, arrows, and, uh, different kinds of weapons, and secret areas and rooms and stuff in these dungeons, a leveling up system. I was actually going back and playing uh, some of the old console role-playing games of the, on the uh, in television there was a couple of a advanced dungeons and dragons games for that and it kind of reminded me of this game uh maybe at some point i'll take a look at those but <laughs> now just starting off here like what is what uh, it's, 
Looks like nothing but uh, some some blocks. I can't even fathom. <laughs> like, what what am I looking at here? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Again, best they've got to work with here. It's basically like graph paper uh, graphics here. But I, I finally sort of figured this out. It's like an arrow. And what's making it look so confusing is, is actually there's a treasure right above me there. <laughs> Uh, that really confused me. And the way you, you're moving around is you don't just, you know, push up on the arrow keys or anything that would be that easy. <laughs> no, you have to turn left and right, and then you put in the number of steps you want to go. So one step, two, all the way up to, to nine, which I guess is kind of a leap. And, uh, you know, it's not the best system. It's kind of cumbersome. I'm not really sure what inspired them why they were so hooked on this idea of uh, certain steps. I mean, you really, I guess they thought you'd really want precision um, with your movements in the dungeon. And, and it does uh, take into account fatigue there. So you can see at the top, 89%. So if you're trying to, <laughs> trying to jog through these dungeons, you'll uh, run out of steam pretty quick. And so there we go. That little... Uh, what is the little rectangle thing up there is a treasure. So I have to get up there to it, and then I can hit G for grab. Grab that treasure. And then it's going to give me a number. Let's see if I can get it lined up there. Just right. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, now, there we go. I'm lined up. Treasure number 20. So then you have to go into the manual there, and at the back of it, it lists all the treasures for you by level. So treasure 20 in level 1 is nothing of value. And so there you are, ladies and gentlemen. I have found a worthless treasure. <laughs> Trash. <laughs> and look, that little uh, plus or cross or whatever you want to call that thing over there. That is a skeleton. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Probably the scariest looking skeleton. I mean, the, the scary part of this game is like, will I be able to distinguish the monster from my own uh, icon? Uh, <laughs> am, am I facing it or is my, my butt pointed towards it? Uh, I don't even know sometimes uh, with this. But, uh, yeah, I don't think I want to fart on it. Let's <laughs> turn around. Uh, the other left, Matt. The, your other right. Oh, God, I don't know. Uh, so you got a swish, you got a sort of a basic attack, and then you have a thrust and a parry and a couple other options here. It looks like I'm connecting. Uh, he's connecting. <laughs> Already got me down to 50%. <laughs> uh, let's see, I think i got to try to turn around again. Yeah, this is uh, a little tricky. Uh, you kind of have to think in your head, like, well, is that a left? Do I need to turn right, given the direction I'm facing? Yeah, it looks like he's is he trying to run away. Not exactly sure what the range I got here is. There we go. <laughs> He's down. <laughs> Thwonk. Monster slain. Bye-bye, Mr. Skeleton. And you can see there my fatigue is going back up, I guess. It worked up a sweat there. Uh, but you might just want to kind of slowly move. No, maybe not jump uh, with those big uh, <laughs> nine-step leaps for a while. <laughs> Let that fatigue uh, tick back up. Uh, now the wounds, I think I'm kind of screwed there because I didn't buy any healing salves. I'm not sure what else I can do. Uh, so there's that lovely treasure number 20 again, which, as you recall, was nothing of value. So I think I should probably should have just dropped uh, the treasure, uh, the worthless stuff, and maybe find something better later on. Oh, there we go! <laughs> man <laughs> yes i know it's just a little plus it's the same icon as before it could have just as easily been a skeleton look i don't care that text there says that that is a swamp rat and that's got me excited because i like killing me <laughs> some rats <laughs> in any form shape representation that you want to come up with trash 80 vic 20 i don't care just give me a rat to thwack and I am happy. And you notice my fatigue's back to 100%. So that doesn't mean you're 100% fatigued. No. <laughs> okay, get him in. 
I'm letting it come to me. I want to savor this moment. I mean, uh, of course he missed. Come on, Matt Star. Wouldn't it be sad if this thing actually killed me? Got killed by a rat in my own video. Come on, crunch. <laughs> you know, that would never happen because I would just not show you that video. I would delete that. Never show it to anybody ever. Swish! <laughs> Come on, get that. Now, see, he's, he's kind of banking off to the left a little bit. Is that... Does that mean, oh, yeah, see, he's, he's gone out of range. Oh, he's back. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Sw oh, I don't know. Swish, does that mean I missed? Is that, is it missed? Does that mean the rat missed? I, I don't know what's going on. He's, he's like right on top of me. Uh, she'll, what is this rat doing? <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay, what is that one? Got him. Got him. Took, <laughs> took a while for me to figure out what it was. Why am I too tired? Too tired. My ass. Get... Oh, I really did warrant. <laughs> what happened to my guy? Oh, oh, there he goes. Okay. Now he's back. Man, I don't know. You know, I'm sitting here. It's easy to make fun of something like this. But, I mean, imagine if this is what you had to work with, right? I mean, look at, the, like, these basically big squares. <laughs> that's, uh, that's your pixels. You know, how are you going to make this look like anything? Uh... Let's see, what am I doing? I'm, I keep going back to the manual trying to see if there's other uh, commands I should be entering. Uh, apparently there's ways to search for traps. and uh, You can search uh, walls for hidden uh, hidden doorways. Uh, so there's more to this than it appears, but... You know, I've already slain two creatures. I don't know how much experience points I'd need to, to level up. Or maybe I should be taking the treasures back out to the store. You know, I don't, <laughs> usually don't get far enough in a game like this to even think about that, that side of it. But hey, there's another treasure there. Let's uh, see what we've got behind that curtain. Ah, uh, stupid treasure 20. God. <laughs> I was looking here at the manual. Why couldn't I be finding things like uh, uh, four gold pieces or five small diamonds? Uh, no, no, I have to keep finding nothing. Well, there's, some of these are really uh, interesting treasures, too. Lilies? Uh, moss, fragrant moss. Uh, you could find mi a mithril sword. And that's one of the fun things about games of this era. You can look at the manual and see all the <laughs> treasures that you're not finding. Because only cool people find mithril swords, Matt. Come on. You find nothing of value. All right, there it is, man. That, you see it? <laughs> I bet you that is the mithril sword. That's my sword, man. Come on, I gotta. <laughs> this is a real challenge at the game. Can I, can I figure out like exactly how many steps and what direction? And okay, maybe I can turn the right way this time. There we go. Grab it. I guess it's still not quite close enough. <laughs> now I'm on top of it, and it's treasure number 20. Treasure number 20. I'll tell you guys, it just... Sometimes I get so depressed. Oh, look, there's a mosquito! <laughs> oh, mosquito. <laughs> Man, that is when you know an RPG designer is... Is messing with you when he's got you up against a mosquito. Yeah, that's how tough I am, man. I'm out with my mosquito, and I'm probably going to get swatted by <laughs> this thing. I'll probably get malaria. Uh, that'll be with my luck. Yeah, it's, this is a malaria mosquito. It's got West Nile. Who knows? See if I can at least point the right direction. <laughs> it's actually kind of coming at the side. I mean, it's, oh look, he got me. Now see, he's look how far away he is, and, and he was able to strike me. Let's see, shield hit. I oh, got him. Oh, just <laughs> I guess I just flattened him with my shield. I mean, that's a nice image. Okay, I'm not even gonna bother with this treasure. I mean, it's probably just another T20, treasure 20, treasure 20. How much you want to bet? That's I'm not even gonna. All right. <laughs> you know, I, I think this game has uh, has expired. <laughs> it's, 
You know what I want to do? I actually want to to take a look at the Commodore 64 version because I sort of have vague memories of playing that one. Uh, it didn't come out till uh, several years after this one, at least the, the trilogy. Uh, but uh, as you can see, they, they've got much better graphics in it. Some of you guys that had the Trash 80, I'd I lo I love to know, I'd love to hear from you. Like, is this was this considered good graphics for that system? Or, uh, are these uh, really primitive looking? You know, I really have no conception, no uh, comparison other than just like, well... <laughs> You know, I'm pretty sure the Apple II could blow this this away. Uh, not to mention the Commodore 64. The... Well, what else did this come out on? Uh, I think I saw maybe two or three different systems. I think it was on the Atari 8-bit. You know, I could have sworn I saw an Atari ST version of this somewhere, but I could just be making that up. Yeah, but look how long it takes to, like, load in uh, these lines. Yeah, these these are games for the patient. Okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. I'll try one more treasure. Come on, I just want to find something other than T twenty. Come on, okay, left. <sighs> ah, you're John Freeman. Ah! All right, enough of this. Let's <laughs> let's go to the Commodore sixty four version. All right, so let's move over then to this uh, uh, redesign. This is Stephen Landrum for Epics and. The <laughs> Uh, basically, Epics uh, took the old games, they put them into this compilation, called it the Temple of Apshai Trilogy, and I'm pretty sure this was available for pretty much any computer uh, they could possibly port this to. It seemed like everybody had it. And uh, I think that, you know, the improvements are immense, <laughs> as you'll see. Uh, although I think basically it's the same game. Uh, I didn't, you know, spend hours with this or anything, but just playing through this... Uh, first dungeon it felt almost identical once you got over the uh the shock of actually being able to see what it is uh that you're supposed to be looking at and the same old stupid bartering system i you know, i could have done without this but at least now i know i should get some of these uh, healing salves what a weird word salve salves <laughs> they were quite confident in my, in my pronunciation of that word. Give me some of that shav, boy. Uh, <laughs> I got a nick. Put some shav on it. Let's see, monster speed. Let's put these guys on medium. Now, see there, you got the three, uh, three different dungeons you could explore. So that's a hell of a value. I have sort of vague memories of this game. I don't think I ever played it. I mean, I would have only been like maybe five, four or five years old. I seem to remember watching my dad play it. Uh, but it was it was kind of new to me. But you know how it is sometimes, a little <laughs> tickling of the old synapses. Now see, that time I could tell what it was. Treasure. And guess what treasure it was? Number 20. I got a whole different computer to try to get away from t t T20s, and I'm still getting T20s. At least this version, though, it just says trash. <laughs> so you don't have to go looking it up in the manual. <laughs> uh, they did use that uh, <clears throat> impressive RAM capabilities of the Commodore 64 to let you know that the T20 was trash. Uh, they still kept this... Uh, weird system of movement with a four, five, six steps or, or whatever. And however, I was able to uh, connect a joystick to this or gamepad. There seemed to be some uh, support for that. But uh, just to kind of stay true to the spirit of the game, I just decided to keep using the uh, the numbered steps. You know, it kind of grows on you after a while. You get, you get better. <laughs> oh my god, what is... Maybe all there is in this dungeon is trash. Maybe I should get to... Maybe uh, <clears throat> I should have gone to a bigger dungeon. Uh, let's see. There's another one. Thou art too far away. Thou art too far away. I like the little character, though. He looks kind of like Tron with a, with a lightsaber. There we go. Come on. You know, it does have music, too. I actually kind of like the music. I turned it down, but I've heard it a few times on the... Uh, there's a couple of remixes of it. Alright, I just want to see what the combat looks like. 
you know, maybe we'll get lucky and they'll find a uh, swamp rat. <laughs> See what that, that would be. That would make up, I think, for all these. Uh, you know, I just can't do it. I just can't walk fast, and I know it's trash. I know it's trash, but I just, yeah, I just can't help myself. I'm a consummate looter. Just loot everything, man. I... There we go. You see, that's a pretty cool effect there. I don't know if you saw that. It might have gone too quickly, but, you know, it was dark. I couldn't see. Uh, then as soon as I cleared that um, that hallway there, I could see the other rooms. A little fog of war effect, I guess you could call that. It does add quite a bit to the uh, suspense of this game. <laughs> oh, and I have upgraded from trash to mushrooms. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, ladies and gentlemen. Matt has mushrooms now. Can you even imagine? Hey, I'll take the mushrooms. You know, some of those mushrooms are, uh, yeah, I have some friends that do that. It's what they call them, myocolo marcology, myocology, something like that. Mushroom hunters. Yeah, sometimes they'll make uh, some pretty good money selling those things. Or at least that's what they tell me. You know, I don't know what really what they use the mushrooms for. A lot of treasures, but not <clears throat> not as many monsters, I don't think. I think the, uh, oh! <laughs> <laughs> look at that thing! <laughs> oh, look at him! Oh, that's a good-looking rat, too. That is a damn good-looking swamp rat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, got it. It dies. <laughs> well, so that made my day. All right, so there's uh, the second game I wanted to talk about. This is Telling Guard. You see, it came out in 1983, so this would have been out at the same time as that uh, game we were just playing. Uh I don't know. I don't know when the first version of this came out. I should, probably should have uh, written that down. But it was done by Daniel Lawrence. I actually got to interview him a couple times just over email, and he sadly uh, passed away uh, before I started my my Matt chats because it would have been really great to have him on. Uh, so I was talking about in the book. He had some some history with this. I think it came out on. He did a game on the old mainframes and let them. Uh, distributed for free but then he decided he wanted to get involved in this uh, personal computer business you know making games for uh, systems like the Commodore and then uh, then he wanted to have the game taken down from the mainframes so and a little bit of history there but I think this game did pretty well for him again it seemed like everybody had it a little bit before my time I sort of remember this uh, I usually would play, instead of this, I'd play the uh, Sword of Fargo. I didn't cover, I'm not going to cover Sword of Fargo, and there's another one, Odyssey, the complete app venture. Uh, some other Bronze Age games, I'm not going to put them in this video because I've already done videos on those. <laughs> uh, so just go and watch those if you want to see that. Uh, but anyway, this is a Talon Guard, and the cool thing about it, maybe, <laughs> I don't want to say the only cool thing, but uh, definitely the big selling point was that uh, the procedurally generated dungeons. So they made a huge deal about this. If you look at the box, if you look at the advertisements for this, you know, it's, I forget how many millions of rooms. Uh, uh, so it's never going to be identical uh, gameplay experience. And it does seem a lot like Rogue. And I think there's uh, probably some connections there, but you know, th there were a bunch of these. Uh, sort of rogue style games on the, the mainframes and then uh, some of them made it to the personal computers and some were commercial some were public domain well that didn't last <laughs> that didn't last long <laughs> another not so mighty adventurer bites the dust uh, but yeah this was definitely one of the more popular ones so this says a return to use the stats so what happens yeah you just wait a while and it's just kind of simulating dice rolls and then when you uh, see some stats you like, you can hit enter. Yeah, type in your name, of course. <laughs> no, Matt's already dead, so let's try to see if Matt Jr. has any better luck here. Uh, but I kind of like how they got all the stats laid out there for you. Uh, sword, armor, and shield. Now, this one didn't make me go through that haggling process. Just start off with some basic equipment. That's nice. I was kind of having trouble getting away from this stairway for some reason. <clears throat> 
Uh, with this game, you don't have to turn. Uh, you can actually just, actually pretty cool, you can use the WASD keys. Uh, with the exception of, uh, to go down, you have to go X. I think S is, is stay put. Uh, that's kind of forward thinking, though. I don't know, I guess that was just purely coincidence. There we go, see some gold, return to pick it up. <laughs> Get away from that damn stairway. It's like he's glued there. A pretty good looking uh, walls there. I'm pretty sure that... Oh, there we go. Minotaur. That's, that's a, you know, a really... I think a nice looking Minotaur. I was, I'm going to be able to recognize what that is. <laughs> well, you know, good graphics. Let's see. Basically, I'm just fighting, evading, or casting. Oh, 300 experience points. Got some jewels. So, I think Daniel uh, Lawrence here, he's, he's treating me right, man. I'm not just finding trash and mushrooms. I mean, we're finding jewels already and, and gold. <laughs> so, I think that's probably closer to what you want when you play a role-playing game. Oh, I got some gems, man. <laughs> Snarf it. Wow, there's just treasure all over this dungeon. Yeah, you think this place will be swarming with adventurers. Yeah, let's see, I think that's about... There's a level one ghoul. Uh, it's the level one ghoul. He looks ghoulish too, doesn't he? <laughs> he looks like looks like some creature that would be on a forum making nasty comments uh, on videos like this. You know, that's what I imagine you look like when you leave an abusive comment. Let's see, you see some silver. Yeah, see, I'm already spoiled now. I'm like, yeah, silver. <laughs> Man, I'm just picking up gold and gems. Don't give me silver. Uh, I found an altar. Let's see. Maybe we'll donate some money to the altar. Dirty pagan trash. Yeah, that's what they tell me when I you know, they pass the offering bowl. You, <laughs> you put your five gold in there. You have filthy pagan trash. Get out of here. Another one bites the dust. So <laughs> Life is cheap. Oh, life is cheap at Delengard. All right, let's move on to the final game. Whoa! <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I saw some we got graphics, we got music. Space, version 2.5. Can you imagine that? He, just, he just, you know, spent basically a couple thousand dollars on this Apple II. And you adjust for inflation and everything. And, you know, you see the <laughs> little triangles and the music. The doo -doo 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 -doo, and you're like, hey, <laughs> hey, everybody come over and see this, this, uh, this magical wonder, the Apple II. Uh, you know how far have we come? Anyway, this is a, a game that was written by Steven Peterson and Sherwin Steffen. And they did this one, they did a sequel to it, and it's all basically, uh, I don't know about all, but a lot of this is a rip-off of the board game, uh, role-playing a uh, pen and paper game, Traveler. Which I've never played it, i never played Traveler. <laughs> so all I know is that this is apparently based on it. And uh, they got into some trouble with the Traveler folks over that, so they ended up ditching this and making another game based on it called Empire, but we don't really need to <laughs> go into all that. Uh, but anyway, it really is something, this character creation system. And my understanding uh, about Traveler is that the uh, the idea is in a science fiction environment, it doesn't make sense to have this, you know, this kid with no education and totally weak, <laughs> no clue what's going on like you would in a you know, uh, fantasy game. You could just throw the barbarian out there with nothing. He learns along the way. Uh, but in a science fiction world, of course, you'd have school that you went to, a certain amount of training. Uh, basically, you have to get to the point where you could pilot a starship or whatever it is you're, you're, you're going to get up to in, in the game, right? So, uh, Anyway, this is a, might be familiar to if you played that System Shock game. Uh, but that's, you know, the idea is uh, you know, what were you doing when you were 16, 17, or, or 18 years old? And what branch of the service did you go into? And <laughs> uh, we're going to get all kinds of uh, testing done on us and, and reports. And we've got lots of ways to further our careers. <laughs> I mean, this is all going to seem kind of silly when we get to the uh, actual game part of this, but... Uh, you just kind of uh, something I kept having to remind myself of is well, this is not. I guess the way that they were thinking about this was this is the game. <laughs> you know, we're not just creating the characters, uh, and then we're going to have fun. But the 
I think they sort of saw this process here as being a lot of fun. Uh, I didn't find it. I think it's kind of weird. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this goes on and on and on. I just kept thinking, man, is this finally over? How many terms do we have to, to do here? Uh, but every time, uh, I guess if, if you were really diligent about this, you'd be uh, getting the report, seeing where your uh, where your poor scores are, seeing what you can do to raise that score, and maybe just uh, ditch the character because it might not be uh, playable. <laughs> Get all the way through this and then find out you won't even let you play that character because the, he's too crazy. Uh, the psych. <laughs> Choice approved. <laughs> Let's see, ship's boat, forward observer, blade combat, uh, gun combat, gunnery, and all these different uh, options every time. And this is just the term, the first term. So you can see this, this is going to take a while. I think you have to do maybe three or four uh, terms. And there's an amazing amount of detail in this. I mean... It doesn't just say your character's deaf. I mean, you'll have, like, so many decibels of hearing loss. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, it's going to take me quite a while uh, to get through this. Selecting another skill. Since you have physical, psychiatric, or intelligence limitations, we made it impossible to be admitted. <laughs> oh, we got to go back to school. You know, one of the fun things about this game, too, is, uh, you know, I've never been able to locate a physical copy of it for my own collection, but uh, if you look at it, it's this three-ring binder. <laughs> it's like a big one, uh, just cram full of uh, documents. I mean, these, these guys are nuts about the, uh, the documentation. And let me just give you a couple other fun uh, things about this. Uh, the history of this. Uh, the <laughs> uh, so the uh, these guys that made this, uh, they they made another scenario, or in, in Space Two, the follow up to this, and that one actually had a uh, scenario called Psychedelia, and that whole the whole scenario was about taking <laughs> recreational drugs. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, can you imagine something like that? Uh, today, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that a lot of parents didn't, <laughs> didn't had the patience to uh, make it, make their way through all these binders uh, to figure out what what is Junior doing over there? <laughs> this apple too. <laughs> oh well, I'm uh, experimenting with recreational drugs. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, there we go. Finally, reenlist if qualified. Retire with cash benefits. Retire with material material reward. So, you get to retire. <laughs> Notice, a state of war now exists between the Galactic Federation and invaders from outside the galaxy. Our per all personnel are, by order of the Executive Council, to report immediately for assignment duty. All promotions, retirements, and discharges are suspended for the duration of this emergency. <laughs> You're back. Oh, God. oh come on. Ugh. Having reviewed your file, it's now time for you to select your training for year two of this term of service. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah what are we, blade combat? I mean, it sounds like we could conceivably have some fun here. I mean, you can get blade combat, gun combat, gunnery. <laughs> gunnery. Ah. Uh, which table? You know, it's, it's, it's bugging me that vacuum is misspelled. <laughs> it's got one C in it. Oh, God. You know, the nice thing, though, it is in basic, so if I bug me enough, I can go in and change it. <laughs> uh, let me just double check to make sure I'm right. Yeah, vacuum. <laughs> that is a weird word. Uh, v A C U U M S. I mean, what other word has two U's in it like that? Vacuum, vacuum, vacuums. I mean, <laughs> I get, I'm trying to keep myself entertained here. Was, we can go through this 
endless scenario. <laughs> Psychiatric exam. Maybe that's the goal, uh, to just drive you insane. Uh, so you'll go uh, to the psychiatrist. <laughs> I felt like I would not pass the psychiatric exam. Uh, warning, what is this? Uh, additional reenlistments. Oh, okay, well that one w went a little quicker. Time always flies when you're thinking about weird spellings. Okay, there's that notice again. <laughs> Is there any actual game to this? Got to be something that's justified. I mean, it must be a hell of a game, right? I mean, after all this training, all this creation. <laughs> oh, God, what, what happened there? I hope I didn't. It's one of the things that terrorizes me about, terrifies me about these uh, old games, man. Sometimes you put in the wrong kind of input and it just breaks. And you you lose everything. You have to reload the game. I mean, <laughs> it can be pretty bad if it takes you know half an hour to load it off a tape or whatever. You know, and I gotta say, I've been looking all over the internets. <laughs> Usually, I can find a uh, somebody will have uploaded the uh, PDF, sc scanned in. They'll scan the manual, put it up as a PDF, or at least a text file somewhere with the instructions. But Good Lord, man, I can't find anything on this game. And I don't know what the box looked like. Uh, there's just really just nothing out there. And you think it was, uh, you know, it's not that obscure. I mean, people know the, this game exists, but yeah. So if you got a copy of the manual with the box, you know, photo of the box, I'd like to, to take a look at it. All right, are we finally done? <laughs> Entering training, oh no. All right, this is year four. I feel like I have gone through a complete bachelor's program at this <laughs> at this point. You know, I think it'd be pretty cool to major in blade combat. I mean, that'd be, do they teach that in the Navy? I mean, can you go to Navy, <laughs> Navy school to learn blade combat? Uh, strength, dexterity, social standing, intelligence. Now, see, it looks to me like my intelligence score is off the off the chains there, but <laughs> that shows how much of an idiot you really are, Matt. Don't you know that's IQ? A hundred's bad. Okay. Okay. Man, I, I feel like I. <laughs> <laughs> deserve a graduation party or something here. I might have to throw myself one. Retire. This is what? <laughs> Medical discharge. <laughs> oh, that's the, the money this turned to date. So basically this whole game scenario was, was nothing but uh, building up to an honorable discharge from the Navy. <laughs> from the Navy. <laughs> Her <laughs> job well done, you <laughs> sucker. <laughs> I don't know what the heck I've even played here. Uh, just the following choices. Play through some of his or her adventures. Oh my god, you mean you <laughs> actually get to play something? Oh. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> this game has taken over my life. It's in my mind. It is rendered me insane uh, characters no <laughs> anything with that first blood first blood you know ram was it rambo what's going on here solitaire play uh, what the specify the character you wish to test in combat all right stand by for transport and reassembly of matt <laughs> Subject Warrior Matt is now reassembled and available. All right. I'm getting pumped. And now time for transport and reassembly of the Defender character. Uh, I don't know what that's supposed to be. Stand by for ch... Oh. <laughs> and we have the disc error. Ah, uh, but... Okay. So, no, no big deal. Just start back up. I guess that is if you had a buddy. <laughs> I tried to imagine a scenario where you actually had a friend uh, that you talked into creating a, a character <laughs> so that you could battle. 
Oh, but maybe I'm adversary ready. All right, let's check this bad boy out. Combat time. Uh, battle inputs for mats. Uh, weapons, unarmed, sword, automatic pistol, submachine gun, <laughs> laser rifle. You know, I think I'm going to go unarmed. <laughs> uh, no, I'm going to go with a pistol. Uh, body armor, leather bullets, uh, bulletproof jacket. Can I? I don't know if I could just choose any any of these items. I mean, are there pros and cons? I mean, it seems like you'd want the powered combat armor. Terrain, prairie, desert, forest, swamp. All right. Adversary has chosen his weapons and his armor. Matt is the defender. Select defense mode. Constructed barrier, physical strength, psychological methods. I should probably pick that one. <laughs> I'm crazy. <laughs> go, go away. Uh, high tech. All right. Here we go. Battle round number one. Turn one is started. Adversary is attacked. Attack met with the response. Computer monitoring results. Injury this round minor to both. Battle round number two. Turn number two has started. And the the, sh the disappointment is setting in. As <laughs> we slowly dawns upon us that this <laughs> is the combat. <laughs> all of that endless Q&A and it's all automated. <laughs> you just kick back, <laughs> read some nice text. You know, it doesn't even try to get clever with the uh, my injury this round minor to both. I mean, remember, like, even Bard's Tell would throw in some kind of colorful adjectives, adverbs, right? You, <laughs> you know, your your butt, uh, part of your intestines are on the floor now. You know, just something. Good God, man. I just, I'm trying to wrap my head around somebody actually buying this thing. I mean, software back then, too. Uh, you know, I've done this where you, you look at, well, it cost 60 bucks back then. What's that, you know, adjust for inflation? And you find a lot of the, just about every game you could buy back then was basically 100 bucks or more in uh, our money. You know, that Apple II, uh, thousands for that. I mean, so you're basically looking at so probably a couple thousand, maybe even uh, three, four thousand dollars, and then <laughs> this is what you're playing. <laughs> and you, you probably liked it too. Uh, that's the thing. Because you didn't have anything to compare it to. Uh, I just got to say, I just think this game is just horrible. You know, it's, just, it's amazing that they, they went on to make sequels and whole other whole other games. Uh, but yeah, this is this is it. This is space. <laughs> space. Version 2.5. Can you imagine what those... This was 2.5? My God, I wouldn't, I wouldn't wanted to see the beta versions of this. Adversary has attack. Attack met with a response. I mean, I mean, maybe if you were drunk enough and you guys had some some money on the table, <laughs> yeah, I could I could sort of see. You know, it's, it's sort of I'm sort of visualizing this, right? You got your buddy there. Uh, you've just spent an hour creating your character. Uh, he's created his character. Now your <laughs> Matt has been killed. Ah, <laughs> oh, end it, end it. No, I don't even have to ask. Oh, God's back. It's, you don't go away. <laughs> oh, if, 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 if I had never played this game. Oh, my God, that triangle. It's, it's hypnotized me. <laughs> gotta play. Gotta play it again. Gotta play it again. Gotta play. No, but you look at there. You got some other options. Explore, traders, high financing. I mean, it's, in some ways, I guess this is kind of like the early version of something like Elite or Privateer. I mean... So anyway, I hope that you've uh, enjoyed these looking at these Bronze Age games. I mean, clearly, uh, they are they look primitive, and sure they are. But uh, on the other hand, you got to think about how uh, much work they represented and the br little breakthroughs and just countless uh, triumphs these guys had. I mean, there's a look at the the source code for this. You can see it's just all in basic, and these guys didn't have anybody to copy off of. Just had to reinvent the wheel every time. Uh, so I think it's really impressive, but I think it will give you a better appreciation for the games to come. Next time we'll be looking at some Silver Age games, uh, so stay tuned for that. I think you will enjoy it.
that's all for this week's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, I want to thank you uh, very, very much for keeping this show in production, for making uh, Matt Chat possible. Absolutely could not do it without you guys. You uh, are the ones who make this show possible. Uh, if you want to see more Matt Chat, if you want to keep uh, the wheels turning, uh, just take a minute to go to that link in the show notes, the Patreon site over at uh, uh, for Matt Chat. And uh, one buck a show, one buck an episode, uh, that's all I ask. And I you know, hardly ever put out... I don't think I've ever put out more than uh, four episodes a month. So uh, basically, you're looking at $4, probably less, uh, to support this show, to keep it going. But uh, I really, really appreciate it, guys. Also, uh, really appreciate uh, people who spread the news about the show, post it on, uh, or tweet about it, post it on Facebook, mention it in your blog, uh, news sites, forums, uh, whatever it is you do. Uh, every now and then I do a little search for Matt Chat and I can see uh, who's been talking about the show. And it's really nice to see people saying, hey, you know, uh, you, if you like that uh, article about uh, Telengard or whatever it is, maybe you should check out Matt Chat and look at some of the interviews he's done. And, you know, stuff like that I see all the time. And I, I just really appreciate it. It makes me feel good. Uh, so thank you for that. All right, so what about that news from the Matt Chat? All right, it's been a few weeks since I did one of these episodes, so I mean the news is just kind of piled up. Uh, I'll see if I can uh, hammer through this, though. I think it's some really interesting items. Uh, the first one is about The Witcher. Uh, there's a new Witcher, a Witcher game coming out, but this is not <laughs> uh, not going to be a video game. This is a tabletop game. So you know it usually works the other way around. They make a video game based on the board game or the a pen and paper game, but this is that process in reverse. It's very interesting. It's uh, based on R. Tolsarian's uh, in-house fusion game system. Uh, so this is, I guess, uh, going to be completely... I think they've got a couple other things they're doing with that game system, but uh, anyway, it seems like it's got some pretty interesting ideas. I'm really intrigued by the whole idea. I want to see how much, uh, you know, thinking about how... Uh, how much action, I guess, is at the heart of that Witcher series. I'm interested to see how they'll be able to uh, recreate or simulate whatever they're going to do uh, with a pen and paper game. You know, how they'll try to recreate or at least uh, create something that feels like a Witcher uh, game in a pen and paper format. I mean, I don't have... I'm <laughs> getting a kind of tongue-tied even trying to talk about it. Uh, I had no idea what... If I, if I were in charge of this, I wouldn't even know where to start. So definitely keeping an eye on that. And then uh, Stig wrote in with a whole bunch of items. Um, the first is about uh, a Halo TV show. <laughs> so, so I thought they already had a Halo TV show. I guess I, I don't know why I was thinking that. Uh, but apparently this has been talked about, I guess, forever. Uh, but it's only now getting green light. It's going to be on Showtime. Uh, green lit. It's going to be on Showtime. And it's uh, being produced by Kyle Killen of Awake and Rupert Wyatt uh, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Uh, so it sounds like it's got some good potential there. Uh, anyway, something to keep an eye on if you like the Halo. Uh, maybe it'll be even appealing to people that don't like I mean, that would be the ideal, right? Just to have a great show. Uh, this happens to be about Halo, <laughs> not just something for the Halo fans. But anyway, to keep an eye on that. And Stig also wrote in about two really, really interesting... I mean, my jaw hit the floor uh, when I was pulling up these links. I'm just uh, completely amazed at this stuff. It's huge. Uh, first one is called Black Geyser, Couriers of Darkness. This is from a Vienna-based uh, company called Grape Ocean Technologies. It's an isometric party-based real-time with pause RPG in a world infested by greed. And this uh, greed is uh, one of the central mechanics of it. It's, uh, they describe it here as spreading all the time in the kingdom, directly affecting the gameplay. And you can slow it up or speed it up depending on what you do in the game. So it sounds really uh, interesting, this idea of greed. It almost sounds like something out of an old uh, uh, Lord British game, uh, one of the Ultimas. Uh, you can have up to five characters, but uh, you start with a single protagonist, and then you can 
add NPCs as you go along. Tactical combat, powerful magic, clear slot based uh, spell system. So anyway, it looks really good. Uh, very Baldur's Gate-ish. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to keep, uh, keep that one on the radar. And this is another one he wrote in about Call of Serignar, a story-centric exploration role-playing adventure game uh, being developed by uh, Dom John Mozatik with uh, music by Tony Menfredonia. Uh, now this one is a 90s inspired low poly role-playing adventure game and uh, to me it looks a lot like Betrayal at Condor which is what he says is one of his influences. He gives a couple more, I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, maybe somebody said it was, uh, I think Nathan was saying it looked a lot like Wizardry 8 to him. Uh, but anyway, it's definitely got that 90s vibe to it. So that's, you know, a <laughs> huge fan of that era. Uh, so definitely be uh, taking a look, uh, look at that. And also supporting him, uh, Dom John, uh, he's got a Patreon uh, page set up where you can go in and contribute a buck a month or whatever uh, towards uh, this game. So I encourage you to do that. I think uh, maybe the more money he gets, the better this will be. And hopefully, hopefully the faster this game will get out because I really want to play it. All right, then just a couple last items here, both related to Commodore. Uh, the first is, uh, we've been talking about this over at the, uh, some of the Matt Chat back channels, about uh, the Commodore 256. Now, uh, it took me a while to figure out what's going on here with this, but basically, if you remember, there was a Commodore 64, uh, there was a Commodore 128, and then there was the uh, Amigas, and uh, uh, there's been an argument there that those that break, that, that jump from the 128 to the Amiga was kind of weird. And, uh, of course, there's stuff going on at the business end that really wasn't what it should be. Uh, but anyway, this is uh, Stephanie Allaire. Uh, her idea of what should have come after the, I guess, the 128. And it's the 256. So if you can imagine a, a souped-up 128, I think is uh, what she's going for here. Uh, it has a 65C816 Western Digital CPU, uh, can display up to 256 colors, and has a megabyte of RAM, and it will have SID chips in there uh, for sound. Uh, that's the Commodore 256. Uh, so that looks really interesting. And then uh, finally, if you do have a Commodore Amiga sitting around, as I happen to uh, <laughs> have right over there, an Amiga 4000, well, there's a new game out for it. It's called Worthy. It's a game from indie developer Pixel Glass. And it plays uh, something like a cross between, they, they say Gauntlet and Boulder, uh, Boulder Dash. Uh, that's certainly what I was thinking when I was looking at, at the footage there. Uh, you're running around collecting diamonds. Um, it's got that sort of aesthetic to it. I, <laughs> you know, just take a look at the, at the video or at the screenshots and you'll, I think, immediately glom onto this. Uh, worthy uh, from Pixel Glass. So I'll put links to all these, uh, all these news items in the... Uh, YouTube uh, uh, the show notes for you, so you can check those out. Uh, by the way, quite a bit of stuff going on, a lot of exciting stuff in the pipes. Wow. All right, let's uh, get this game open then. I think I should probably do that before the ale, so uh, I'll hop over, change my setup a little bit here, and then you'll be able to see me open up that copy of Telenguard. All right, so here we go with uh, Telenguard. And I wanted to say uh, it was Al, uh, Alan that sent me this. I remember... Uh, he was there for a while. He was uh, buying games and then shipping them to me because he was overseas. And for, for whatever reason, he ended up with like a whole box of these telling guards. He must have had like a dozen of these. And he just said, yeah, go ahead and take one for yourself. And, and of course, I was happy to, uh, to take that off his hands. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the sealed uh, copies. You know, I know I piss people off sometimes. They'll, sit, get, they'll give me something in the sealed box and of course the first thing I do is, is open it because uh, that's what I like about collecting you know, I want to get my hands on this stuff I want to play around with it uh, you know even sniff it I mean I'm kind of weird that way uh, so don't, don't send me anything sealed if you want to keep it sealed uh, you know keep that for yourself but anyway here's the box and you can see it's a nice big one Avalon Hill I got a couple more of theirs around here somewhere there's Carrier Force uh, they're all about this size and uh, you know, it's quite a bit of text there. They put a lot of stuff on the box. Actually, a really good cover painting on this. Uh, let's see, this one is for, uh, there's a cassette in here that has C64, 64K Atari, home computers. Uh, so this is this will be, I guess, probably a double-sided tape. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and do this. And I notice it's already got a little breathing hole there, I guess. Or, uh, 
you know, sometimes these games can, uh, the plastic will actually start shrinking to the point of damaging the box. But anyway, there we go. <laughs> Thousands of dollars. Now the game is worthless. Nope, it's actually worth more to me because now I can get in here. Okay, let me open her own up. Wow, well, just perfect condition. Ah. So you can see your nice presentation. Oh well, my God, what do we have in here? Uh, so here's the manual for telling guard. Could have used this as I was uh, playing it nice. I don't know if you can see this actually, but it's kind of a green, uh, green color. Rest, it's sort of black, white with the, the green. A little pictures there. That's a nice page. I mean, you could probably find this in the PDF file, but uh, you know, nice size uh, manual. I don't know what this is. It looks like a Maybe a poster. Yeah, check that. Oh, check this out. Man, aren't I glad I opened this? Look at that. Oh, it's that lovely uh, painting in a poster form. Holy cow, you know, this is just no mention of this anywhere that it comes with a poster. Wow. Well, I wonder who did this, this painting. I probably should have looked that up. Uh, fantastic stuff. I really need to look into framing this, putting it up. I'd love to have a telling guard poster on display here somewhere. Uh, and then, of course, we got the uh, the tape. <laughs> oh, man. Cassette tapes. And there's some more stuff in here. What? Okay, we have the uh, Avalon Hill Games and Parts price list. Games and Parts. Oh, wow. Look at this. Look at that. Now, this is all of their, you know, of course, Avalon Hill, they did a lot of uh, uh, board games and tabletop games. Wow, this is really cool. And what is this little guy? Now, it looks like this is a uh, just a little flyer, I guess, for some of their other computer games. Expectation. Eager anticipation. <laughs> yeah. And we do a friend a favor. If you know someone who has the basic brain power to comprehend Avalon Hill games, <laughs> then get them to send us this postcard. I mean, how is that for our marketing uh, campaign? Let me just read this. Let me just read that again. Okay, so this is part of the uh, marketing materials that came with this game. I mean, try to imagine this today, right? Some, somebody telling you this. If you know someone who has the basic brain power to comprehend Avalon Hill games, then get them to send us this postcard. In turn, you'll be doing yourself a favor. You might pick up a new opponent in your neighborhood. So I love this. It's like so the opposite of this whole dumbing down uh, approach we see in everything. Uh, not just games, it's like the <laughs> society at large. I mean, you know, I like, I like that. I like the moxie of that. And let's see, games for the home computer. So yet another little catalog. Uh, this one's full color. All of their games. Wow, you know, this is, you know, really just a bit of history here. Just great stuff. So, <laughs> anyway, that's, uh, you know, I guess as you're waiting for this tape to slowly load, I don't know how long this would have taken, but I seem to remember, you know, half an hour, maybe even to uh, 40 minutes or so for these things to load. Telengard. Really, really cool. It's really fun, too, if you ever put one of these tapes just in a regular cassette player and uh, play it, you get to hear this really weird, these really weird sounds. It sounds like something straight out of, uh, you know, like, a sci-fi movie. Even weirder. It's more like 2001 A Space Odyssey. <laughs> All right, so anyway, that was uh, the Telling Guard. A lot of fun stuff in there. Uh, so hopefully you enjoyed that uh, opening segment. All right, so what about the Ale of the Week? Uh, this time, I'm really excited about this. There's a company out there. Well, let's see, where are these guys out of? It's called Clown Shoes. And I'm pretty sure I've had a Clown Shoes L on here before. These guys are out of uh, Boston and Windsor, Vermont. Uh, but they have this really intriguing line of, uh, I guess, fantasy-themed, it's almost like bizarro fantasy-themed labels uh, for their ales. And it really kind of caught my eye. I thought, wow, it would be really appropriate for Matt Chat, you know. Uh, but this one is called the White Tail Unidragon. <laughs> White Tail 
Unidragon. You have to think about that one. Uh, I guess it appeals to hunters who also play Dungeons and Dragons, you know. A Russian Imperial Stout aged in bourbon barrels. So uh, you had me at uh, <laughs> aged, in, aged in bourbon barrels. You know, I think I would uh, like just about anything aged in a bourbon barrel. It's just, I really love that flavor uh, that that uh, bourbon barrels uh, give stuff. But of course, <laughs> you know, not nearly as strong as if you just try to drink bourbon, of course. Uh, just, you know, this way you get the flavor without that uh, intense alcohol. Let's see, there aren't many un Unidragons out there in the wide world, but the beasts do get frisky. The white-tailed Unidragon is the product of wacky interspecies shenanigans. You can only imagine. To commemorate this most unusual love child, we are bringing back this unique beast for 2018. This limited release bourbon barrel aged version of, o of Ohio Unidragon is exclusive to the Midwest. Now, sorry about that, uh, guys that uh, and guys and gals that are live, happen to live somewhere else. You know, uh, what do they call us, flyover country? You know, we have to have something, right? I mean, we have to have something that makes it worth living here. Maybe this Ohio Unidragon will be the thing. Let's see, uh, www.clownshoesbeer.com. And let's see if they give us anything else about the beer. Uh, says they're 12 percent alcohol by volume so that's on up there you know hopefully it won't be uh <laughs> hopefully it won't be too fumy uh, but anyway i'll give you a nice close-up of the label here so you could uh, admire that but uh let's get this thing open and see what it's all about all right so i got some of this clown shoes white tail unidragon <laughs> Man, that is a nice looking white tail unidragon, man. That's a got to be what a seven eight point <laughs> unidragon, <laughs> aged in bourbon, uh, bourbon barrels. I can definitely smell that bourbon uh, barrel aging process. You know, if I didn't know better, I'd just think this was just a <laughs> straight up, uh, straight up a drinking horn full of bourbon. Get that nice sort of cherry, chocolatey, uh, sort of smoky aroma. It just smells super good. Um, I mean, I think it was like 12% alcohol, but uh, no fumes off of this. Nothing uh, funky about the uh, the smell of this. This smells uh, really sweet and smoky. I'm really looking forward to trying this, so let's give it a go. Wow. I mean, that is almost just like a, a bourbon candy, kind of like a butterscotch uh, quality of that. Very chocolatey, very cherry, uh, very sweet, actually. Um, not a whole lot of bitterness. I think the uh, kind of a toasty aftertaste on it. Uh, really, really nice. Yeah, it's just really, really good. I'm going to try this again here. Yeah. Uh, a little bit of a... What is that there? Like a little bit of a... There's sort of an unusual flavor hit me there for a second. <laughs> Let me try to nail it down with uh, one more swig here. Ah. I guess maybe a little bit of a... What is that? It's almost like a caramel flavor. Uh, but anyway, I don't really taste there. Get that sort of chocolatey coffee. Uh, the bourbon is really, really uh, pronounced. You, if you like the bourbon, which I do, I think you'll really appreciate this. Uh, not as, it smells smokier than it tastes, if that makes any sense. And it's not bitter or uh, alcohol, uh, alcoholic tasting at all. It's actually just really sweet, uh, really nice, uh, you know, super nice Russian Imperial Stout. Nice uh, creamy consistency on this. Uh, you know... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm convinced this is excellent stuff. Uh, I have no problem going a full five out of five drinking horns on this. Uh, let me see. Clown Shoes, White Tail Unidragon Russian Imperial Stout. So uh, this is definitely one of the better uh, Russian Imperial Stouts. Usually they're just so strong and a lot of fumes and stuff. Just not really very pleasant uh, for me. But this one uh, really just gets the balance absolutely right. Uh, so see if you can find this. I know you will appreciate it and enjoy it. Uh, so a full five out of five on the white tail unidragon. All right, so let's wrap it up with a quote. And I thought it was appropriate to uh, 
uh, to have the quote from have a quote from Steve Ditko. He's uh, of course the creator of Spider-Man. Apparently, he's done a whole bunch of other uh, comics. Uh, he just kind of was all over the place. A really uh, uh, towering figure in the comic books uh, comic book world. Uh, but anyway, he passed away recently, and I wanted to put a quote, kind of as a tribute to him, I guess. Uh, put one of his quotes on here. He's got a lot to choose from, as you can imagine, but uh, this is one I thought was really interesting. I'm not quite sure what the <laughs> what to make of it exactly, uh, what, what the context of this was. Uh, but it goes something like this. Power doesn't corrupt. It's neutral. Someone always wants to corrupt power. It's the way a shotgun is not a deadly weapon until someone chooses to use it irrationally. So ponder on that and see you guys next week. Ending is beautiful. You've never seen a Valkyrie go down.